Hello. In this video, I'm going to convert a 2D map into a 3D model using FreeCAD. This is something I created to teach Cub Scouts how contour lines work. It could also be used to create your own models of places you've visited. To get the printed output, you'll need a 3D printer or somebody else that has one. But you can also explore it digitally without needing a hard copy. The first step is to find an appropriate map that includes contour lines. This can be a digital map or a print map that you've scanned in. I'm going to be using the OS maps as shown here. These are considered the de facto maps for Great Britain. You could use other maps including Google Maps with the terrain layer on, but they may not provide the same level of detail. I have the, a premium account for Ordnance Survey maps, which is reasonably priced and is useful if you want to do a lot of walking in the UK. But you don't need to use that, you can just use the free account. And in fact, the standard maps used by the free account may be easier than the leisure maps. Uh, this is the hills I'm going to do. This is the Licky Hills, which I'm going to model. And this is in the standard map view. And as you can see, it's nice, quite clear. You can see the contour lines, and this is the sort of image we need for creating the model. If we switch to the OS Leisure Maps, which are available on the Premier service, then you can get this, more, this map, which has got a lot more detail. You see these are only five meters apart to each of the contour lines. This has its pros and cons. I mean, it means you can get more detail but if you look how close the lines are together and how much extra work that's going to be involved, bear in mind this is mainly manual work uh, mapping these, then that's going to make it harder. Also, you'll find that because of some of the symbols on here, they're obscuring some of the contour lines, making it a little bit more difficult. Whereas switching to the standard map, it's a lot simpler and a lot easier to follow. And you can also zoom in these and it displays the contour numbers as well, which can be useful at times. So I'm going to be using the standard map and I'm going to take a screenshot of that so I've already done that. Let's show you what the image looks like. So this is the image I'm going to be using. Notice I've included the legend, the scale in the bottom right corner. That's actually intentional because that's going to make it easier to get the scale correct when we load it in. Now, if we move to FreeCAD, and create a new image, and if you, st it, it would start on, on say the start or the or the part workbench, and the image workbench, and then if you take this middle button of these three images, which is create a planar image. 3D space that will open up the image and create a plane for it. I want to choose the XY plane because that's the view you get when you look straight down, which is obviously what a map is. And you can see we've got the image loaded on here. If this didn't work for you, uh, you might want to check the version of FreeCAD you're using. I tried before with FreeCAD version 0.18 and I found I had problems with that and upgrade to the latest version, which is 0.19, fix that problem. So the next step is to scale this so that uh, it's a known dimension. I like to set this so that one millimetre in FreeCAD represents one metre in the real world. 
a ratio of 1 to 1000. The main reason for this is because it makes it easy to translate between the map and your image. So a contour of 10 meters, you just need to create a pad of 10 millimeters and you don't have to do any calculations to do that, it's, uh, it's straightforward. In this instance I've got a marker here of 200 meters. So I'm going to set this to a scale distance of 200 millimeters and that will set the image to the right dimension. Use this uh, icon here which scales an image plane by defining distance between two points. And we're going to do this for 200 millimeters. And it says select the first point. So we're going to go from this point here to this point here, which we know is 200 meters. And then click OK. And select the image plane. And then click OK. And there we go. So that's scaled that now to the right dimensions. And we can now start mapping the area. Switch to the part design workbench and as a create a new body. That's what we want to do. And we're going to name that the uh, contour layer that we're going to, to start. And we're going to create a new body for each contour layer. I'm going to start with the 200 contour line here. here. So we'll call that 200, represent 200 meters, and that will be our, our base. That doesn't mean we can't go to any lower than that. Uh, we might do that afterwards if we want to increase the size of the image a little, the model a little. But it, if we use that at the same level as this image, then it's going to make it easier to space the rest out. So now create a sketch on that and we'll again use the XY plane, the same view looking down. And then within the sketch tools we can use the B spline sketch. And this is going to create a curved line around we start by clicking on this 200 meters line, we'll start here. And then we can zoom in using the scroll wheel and move around use by pressing down the scroll wheel and moving around. And we can just click on this line to create our contour line. You can create as many uh, points as you like. The more points you create, the more accurate it's going to be, but also the longer it's going to take. So just try and get a reasonable number. And, just, and it will curve between them, so it's not like it's going to be jagged like it's showing at the moment. And sometimes it's hard to see where the lines go. One of the things about these is they usually have some that are darker than others. And particularly this 200 meter one I'm on is a little thicker than the rest. It looks like it curves around here. But I'll just take a look at the map and see if that's right. So we can go back to the original map. So we started so we're coming up to the B4096, so if we find that on here, where? As you zoom in and out, you, you get a slightly different. There we go. So that's that's right. So this is the bit we've 
we're trying to map here so we know it goes up here so it takes a, a curve here and around there so back to here so it, it comes into here roughly does it curve around here see it comes to this point here there we go so this is something you might need to do as you're creating just switch back to the original image and we can see we're in the right place because we're between the 190 and the 200 and we keep on clicking until we reach either the edge of the image in which case we go around the outside image back to the start so here it looks like it comes off here and we can trim these edges off afterwards so it doesn't need to be too exact We can see if it re-emerges here. I can't see it coming in here. These are obviously higher. And this is where it comes back in here. If you want a nice sharp edge then you need to put a few extra points in if it's nice and curved then you can put much better space in and finally it's this darker line here And then when you finish off you need to make sure you go back onto the original one and it'll change colour to yellow when you line it up and then when you've clicked on then it will remap that now it's not the white lines that it's going to be using as you look if you zoom back in there's a very thin green line the white one's just a, an approximation showing the straight lines between the b spline curves but if you look at the actual green lines, they're more accurate. If you put one in the wrong position, you can always change at this point. Just right click to close that. There was one point I uh, overshot a little bit. There we go. This is, this is the one I... Um, you actually want these ones that have got, got this outer circle. And if you just try and move that, there we go. So that's that one fixed. Uh, normally, if creating sketches, you want to constrain them. And as you can see here, there's, there's no constraining. Oh, there, there's a few constraints, but that have been automatically put in. But we don't need to worry about constraining for this particular use. So we just close that. And then you can create a pad and so these are 10 meters apart so a pad of 10 millimeters is right and what you'll see if you look at this is that we've created this that's 10 millimeters
So that's looking good. So one of the things about this now, obviously with this here, we can't see to draw the next um, one. So what I'm going to do is turn off the pad, but I'm going to, which you just do by pressing the space bar, you'll toggle between visible and, and invisible and bring the sketch visible. So we can see this line shows where we've marked our first contour and that's going to be really useful when we're trying to follow the other contour lines because we can make sure where the next one along to that. And then for the next contour line we're going to need a new body. So click on new body, I'm going to call this 210. So this is going to be the 210 meter line and we're going to move it look on the model uh, and on the data placement I'm going to position this so its Z value is 10 millimeters higher than the first line so that will mean that it's the same distance up as the other layer is padded or the other body is padded and then we can just create a sketch on there and we choose the xy plane yeah. Some reason it's not actually sure. Oh, there we go. Perhaps just need a slight turn. So we can see the existing line, and we're going to take this 210 line here. So here's the beast line again. Start here, and it's just a case of following this line this time. And as before, it's as many clicks as you feel appropriate for the level of detail you wanted to capture. There's a reminder that we're on 210, so that's good. I always do at least three points at a corner when we're outside because that will make sure that it doesn't cut the corner off too much. And again, make sure that goes yellow Oops, missed it there. there so I actually missed one here. Now I could go and change this, but it's useful to be able to show the sometimes you might have two unrelated contour lines as well so we'll just treat that this as though it was unrelated so just close that and create the padding for this as it doesn't like the conflicting restraints as i say we don't really need these constraints so it's probably that one better. So you don't need to worry about having the constraints but you shouldn't have conflict in ones or redundant constraints. So if we now pad this and see it's created that. Let's 
fact, yeah, so we should have had a cutout here. So let's imagine that this was a depression. Um, because remember, not all contile lines go up. There may be that they, you've got a dip inside a hilly area and you need to cut that out. So that would be the same as if we're going to do it here. So in that case, this is going to be another sketch on that same body. I'm just going to turn off the visibility of the pad. And we're going to cut out just this bit here around there. XY plane. And we can just pocket that. Um, 10 millimeters. And it reversed so it goes down. If we just have a look by turning the pads on. We can turn the pad on that bottom layer and then we can see that we've got two two layers each of which is 10 millimeters high And then we just keep repeating that for the remaining layers. close that we can just check that that's going to work okay by doing the padding once again turn off the pad turn on the sketch and then we can continue doing the rest of them So now we've come to a point where I've created this layer here, uh, which is 280 meters. And there's another area here that's also 280 meters. Now, FreeCAD doesn't allow you to have two independent objects in the same body. So that means we need to create a separate body for this one. We'll just call it 280-1. 
and we'll just put it at the same Z position as the previous one, which is 80 millimeters. Um, and now we can just create that sketch. Now if you look at these, these should be both on the same level, which they are. And we'll do some checks later when we uh, are finished and we can put them all the layers back on together. But that's how we create two separate areas, same height. We can do the same for here, although this may get trimmed off anyway uh, at a later stage, but I'll do it anyway. That one's gone orange because it's got some conflicting constraints. I'll just remove some of those. Now, in all my concentration on doing this, I there's actually another hill over here which we need to do as well. And as before, we can't put multiple objects in the same body, so we need to create two new bodies for these. So look at that one's 230. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that these are just in the order I created them. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a simple way of reordering these. There are ways of doing it, creating groups and moving them one at a time and things. But there's no standard way of, of renumbering them or reordering them. And that's not a problem. These are, after all, different bodies. And how they interact is how you define them, not by what order they're in this list. However, it's just a little bit frustrating that I can't move that up alongside 230. So now we've finished all that, we can turn on the actual padding and have a look at see how it's going to look. I'm going to leave the, um, the sketches visible as well because they might come in handy. So now we can have a look round through. Zoom in and look, make sure we haven't accidentally got any on the wrong layers. Usually there would be a gap if we put one on the wrong layer. Or you would notice some kind of obvious overhang. There's not, so that looks good. 
Now, just wondering whether it's worth making that a little bit bigger and encompassing perhaps a couple more of the grid lines. Now, these this time will have to go down. So the important thing here is we can't actually move them down until we've created them. So I'll create them first and then I'll show you what I mean. Our lowest level at the moment is 200, so we'll go for 190. sketch so we can leave all these turned on because these are not going to be obscuring what I wanted to do you'll notice there's another contour line in here now my assumption is that's going to be a depression uh, so it sinks down, so I'll have to check on that in a bit. And this is going beyond the area I'm going to print, because I'm going to trim all this off, so it just doesn't really matter where it goes. Now, I'm going to create the pad here, but I'm not going to move it yet because of this dip that I think I need to create. Just find it in a bit more detail. So here, there's a, just a little contour line, so I just need to check that. This is what I was looking for, just check this contour. So this actually comes up, so it's a, a little hill. Uh, if it was a, a depression, if it sunk down, then I'd have to cut it out of that previous level layer that I've just created, the 190 contour, before I moved it down. But as it's not, I can just carry on. So. In that case, if I turn that pad back on, um, it's at the wrong level now. So what we need to do is, this is below 200, so we need to do minus 10 instead. I need to click on the uh, on the body. And you'll see now the reason I didn't do it earlier is because that's now disappeared underneath this image. Um, if I just turn off the image plane, you can see it's underneath there. And it would have just made it a bit more difficult. So we know that needs to be another 200 layer. And because that's on the 200 layer, the 200 meters, which is the first point I started, that's all that's needed for that. So if I just turned off that. So it's just a question now whether I want to do another layer, another 180, say. I think it might be better if I just do, oops, if I do another layer, 280, so 180.
now I've made this pad I need to move this down by minus 20 this time just hide the image you can see that's that's a fairly good representation now as you see I've over created some overhangs and I've just quite a rough edge there that's not quite right so I'm going to just trim that I'll show you how you can trim down there so I'm going to go to the part View. what I'm going to do is create just some rectangles to go along there along there and just to trim this bit off here as well and I'm going to do that but first I need to change all these into a compound object so that I can do the building operation on them Otherwise you can only do it on them individually and that would defeat the point of what I'm trying to do. So if I just select all these and then use this to create a compound. So we've got this one compound object now. So now create a just basic shape, use the cube. Uh, it's appeared in the middle of there so just transform it and bring it out here and then change its dimensions so length wants to be wants to be 200 its height wants to be 200 and its width wants to be about 2,000. That looks like it probably needs to be a bit more than that, 2,500. And then we move that into position using transform. In fact, it needs to be quite a bit bigger. Is to remember we went below the um, below the bottom layer, so we need to move that. Yeah. So we need to just move it, just so we can tidy up all that. Just tiny little bit of that layer remaining. Now what you need to do is choose the compound, so, so finish, click OK to finish that transform. Click the compound first, then shift and choose a cube. And now you can use this cut tool and then it's just taken that off and given it as a nice clean lovely edge over there. Let's do the same across here. So create another cube. matter exactly it's just make it big enough that it's going to trim the areas we want it to choose the 
cut, which is our previous one, and then choose the cube, and then perform the next cut. And there we go, that's all finished now. So the last step is to export it. You need to choose the last cut and then you can um, export as an STL file. You can now export the model and import it into your slicer. You may need to scale down the image to fit onto your 3D printer. Here are some of the models I've created, as well as Licky Hills. I've also created one of the Worcestershire Beacon in the Malvern Hills. And this one's of Redditch. I've hand drawn some of the symbols on it so it can be used as a demonstration to show how the contour overlaps with the map. I hope you found the video useful. If so, please give it a like and a share. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more Maker videos in future. I hope to see you on a future video.